So in this video, we're going to talk about solving uh, polynomial inequalities, um, specifically uh, using the test point method. Um, and earlier in the course, I, I mentioned that all of these polynomials come with questions. So, or excuse me, all of these inequalities come with questions. In this case, um, the question that come would come with this inequality uh, is where is the graph up below or on the x-axis? So where is the graph of the given polynomial below or on the x-axis? Well, um, to determine this, um, we're going to start searching for the x-intercepts. Um, those won't be our answers, uh, but instead they're called critical values. Uh, they're the points on the graph where you change from potentially above to below or below to above. So we need to investigate those points and what's happening there a little more closely. Uh, so in order to, to start this problem using the test point method, I'm actually going to change the problem to an equation. Uh, if it's an equation, now we can move forward with uh, traditional techniques uh, such as factoring or, or in this case synthetic division. Um, using synthetic division, we put together our list of possible rational zeros. Um, in that list of possible rational zeros, uh, one of the numbers that works uh, is a 2. So again, cut into the chase there a little bit. Um, decreasing sequentially, we have to remember to put our placeholder in. Bring down the 1, 2, 9, 18, 18, 36, and 0. So we find out that x equals 2 works, and that we have x squared uh, plus 9x plus 18 equals 0, which factors into an x plus 6 and an x plus 3, which tells us that uh, we found out that x equals negative 6, negative 3, and 2, the 2 came from up here, um, are our critical values. Again, not our answers, but numbers that we have to look around. Uh, so we're going to take these critical values and we're going to put them on a number line. This number line is essentially your x-axis. So negative 6, negative 3, and a 2. And then we're going to test points in each of these intervals. So maybe I'll test a negative 7, a negative 4, a 0, and a 3. Just have to make sure the numbers are in the interval. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll need to take those numbers and I'll need to go plug them back into the original. Now, remember, synthetic division is just a fancy way of factoring. So where I'm going to plug this in isn't going to be the, the original version, but instead it's going to be the complete factored form. So it gives us an x minus 2 an x plus 6, and an x plus 3. Uh, and we're trying to figure out where that is less than or equal 0. So if I take a number like uh, negative 7, the reason why it's easiest to go into its factored form is not because we care about the actual outcome. Uh, what we really care about is if the outcome is positive or negative. So if I put a negative 7 in, you can see that this factor would give me a negative. This would give me a negative. And this would give me a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative would give us a negative. So any values between negative infinity and negative 6 would give us a negative value. So let me go ahead now uh, and erase the parts here that I don't want. That was a negative 7 we tested. So now I'll move over and I'll test the negative 4. I'll do it the same way. Notice if I take a negative 4, I get a negative, a positive, and a negative. Uh, so these two together give me a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Similar with the 0. If you ran the 0 through, you would end up with a negative. And if you ran the 3 through in the same way, you would end up with a positive. Now, to be fair, it won't always alternate signs, so, so be a little careful on that. Um, it won't always alternate. Be sure to check all of the, the red numbers. Okay, So for us, uh, we're interested in where the graph is below or on the x-axis, so we're interested in the negative numbers, negative intervals. So a final answer here would be negative infinity to negative 6 inclusive uh, union negative 3 to 2 inclusive. The inclusive brackets come because we are or equal to uh, in this particular problem.